Hey there friends, it is me, HL Mod Tech, and today I'm here with a cool challenge. This is the Delta Dart Challenge, and I'm also using my Paladel lapel microphone to record the audio as well. First things first, this little Delta Dart costs you $3, and you have to have all of your work done before you can purchase it, and then use your extra time to build this, but this is one of our sweet extensions. Right now, I'd like to show you a quick clip of the Delta Dart in action. All right, so if you buy one of these kits from me, let's look at what the parts are. So this would be called doing your parts inventory. The first thing you wanna find is your manual. I'm gonna take this manual and I'm gonna do the instructions for you with the video, but it's great to have because it has some great details. Sort your sticks into a few little piles. You need to find the rubber band, which you're gonna tie together later, the propeller, the motor stick, and then the sticks that we're gonna use for all the airframe. When you count these sticks, make sure you have at least nine of them. You may have 10. At this point, let me know if you're missing one. There you go, I have three, six, and nine of these sticks. Once you've confirmed it, make sure you write your name on the storage container, cross off any other names so we know that it's yours. And then at the end of the day, store this in the black filing cabinet. These open on both sides and You've got to squeeze this in and pull it out, and that's where we can store our materials so nobody messes with them. Any parts that you complete, they get stored in these cabinets right here. Step one is to find a piece of cardboard to build on. This will be your piece of cardboard for the entire project. So once you've got it in place, pick up your design, and we need to put your name in the built by location. I'm going to label mine Mr. H. And then we need to flip it over because we do the design work upside down. I'm going to put my name back here too just so that I don't lose track that this is my project. Open the parts container and find the tape. We just need to tear off four small pieces to hold our design in place. The first step in our design is to slice from A to B with our X-Acto knife. You need to ask me to use the X-Acto knives each day, but they are stored over here at my desk. And you just simply need to say, hey, Mr. Harmon, can we use one of the X-Acto knives? And I'll tell you yes. At the end of the hour, make sure you show me when you return it. With our design in place, taped and named, the first step is simply to slice from A to B. What that does is it makes it so that our tail fin later is going to be separate from this motor stick. There will never be glue here. Later you're going to learn about gluing this area. Find your glue Find bottle. Find the glue bottle inside the parts bin. When you make remove sure the cap, that make sure that it has only has a small hole, hole if people that was poked, poked by a pin instead of somebody uh, slicing the glue bottle. Glue if you find it sliced, glue please let me know. Plane. Find the motor stick and note that it has a sloped edge and a flat edge. Make sure the flat edge is that way. Look for the little cross hatched area. That means there's little lines going sideways. You can see them through to the design. And then put a tiny bit of glue all the way across there. You want little bits of glue, not lots of glue. So that way it's not gonna ooze everywhere. If you cut that hole, which sometimes people make the poor choice of doing, then it expands the glue too much and you end up with glue outside your design, which is a drag later. The glue is only added from that AB mark where we sliced to the back of our airplane. It is time to start gluing our sticks on. If you have the angles of these sticks cut incorrectly or not cut at all, there would be no strength and our plane would fail. So what we do is we lay our stick exactly on the design and then mark a line so that this angle now matches the top of our motor stick where we're going to glue it on. That's going to be a slanted piece that then is going to fit flush against this edge. And I'm going to make sure I put glue in this area and here. Before you go any further, I want you to come show me where you drew that line because I don't want you to waste any sticks making poor choices. 
But I also want you to make a long line here because this flap, I'm going to accentuate it, folds over and comes down here. This gives it more strength on that joint. If you've got that cut approved, you can simply use either the blue or the white cutting board for the area where you cut it and just try and slice it as clean as you can. So now our design has that cool sloped angle and when we set it in this spot you can see it's going to fit very well. The other nice thing is when we place it in here now we can see the exact line that we trace for that part of the fin as well. If you've been approved for the first cut well then I'll approve you for this cut as well. Now that stick is going to fit exactly on that spot to help our plane have a really nice strong tail fin. Making sure I still put my cap on my glue each time. I'm going to put just a little bit of glue all the way back along there. I want it attached but I don't want it oozing everywhere. You also have got to make sure you put glue on the wood because you want that stick to actually glue to that location. Let's get that stick placed. And we're ready to move to the back stick. Once again, this stick has to glue to the wood. Make sure you use the stick you already cut instead of wasting one of your big sticks because you do have a measured amount of these. This one is a flat connector, so we don't have to change it. That one, we just connect the line through so we have the exact angle we want. Use your X-Acto knife again cap it for safety, and glue it in place. Just really going to make sure you understand the back gluing here. Once again, I'm going to put some glue on the wood and the paper so that this becomes a real sturdy connection when it's done drying. And now it's time to take this little flap. And notice I'm just doing two slices and then lifting so that the flap can come over and make that a strong, strong, strong connection. Glue, glue, glue. Cap the glue because we don't want it to get plugged. And there's your tail fin. Just like that. At this point, let's start on our Delta Dart wing where the delta is the angle. That's what it's talking about. That angle means this has to bend. So when we glue these three pieces, make sure that in this location and this location, you don't glue the sticks together. We want them to bend the first day we make them. We do want to make sure that we have a line in the middle because you want your two sticks to end up right at that point. So I'm making a nice straight line there, just using one of my little sticks kind of as a ruler. And this is where those are going to meet in the middle. I'm also going to remind myself that I've got these flaps out here because I don't want to cut those off. Remember, those fold over. And then don't forget these sticks because sometimes they elude people when they're building. We're going to do sticks one, two, three, and four first, making sure they are super snug before we move on. I'm gonna draw my nice straight line out here and my nice straight line out here so it's easier to measure the sticks. When I lay the sticks in place, that allows me to simply draw the line that connects those two lines so I know what to cut. I'm also gonna make these so that I can lay, uh, see them. So I'm gonna label that stick one gently. Now I simply slice that angle and slice that angle. Remember, I've got a limited number of sticks, so you really want to measure accurately when you do this. 
and then check it out. Stick one comes right to the exact spots that I wanted. Repeat that same process for the other sticks as well. Lay them in place. Use your pencil to connect the lines so that it's gonna be easy to cut them. Put the little two on them so you know which one goes where. And then slice away. Use my little 5x speed option to speed that up and then put the pieces in place. Measure and label the other sticks as well. I'm gonna slide these out of the way so it's easier to draw my lines. This part is so essential. Make sure you and if you have a partner over here, make sure they don't mess it up. And then I also really like having those numbers on the sticks so that it stays clear. There's my three and a four. Notice I'm holding it in place so that way it doesn't wiggle so I don't end up with two different marks. Over to the cutting board, slice them and slice them. Lay all your sticks in place to make sure you understand what comes next. When we glue these together, remember there's no glue between the sticks at the moment but they have to be really snug. That means they have to be really touching in the middle. Little gaps out here don't matter because out here, we're gonna glue this flap over when we're done. If your sticks totally fit, it's a good idea to show me so I can say, yeah, that's great. And you can glue them down. Once again, when we glue, we don't want glue oozing everywhere. We just want them between the spots, and then this one we're just gluing to the paper. Where I told you that other one we wanted to glue the sticks to each other on the wood, this one we're just gluing to the paper. Make sure you can still see your numbers, that way you know you got them glued on the right side up. And then make sure you line them up with those lines. I'm going to say it one more time, or maybe four more times. Snug, snug, snug. So see how those two are touching each other? That's the part that matters. That's a good joint for later. See how tight that fit is? That's what you want to have. With these glued down, let's cut the little flaps. I always go a little larger than the area, just because they end up being a little stronger that way. And then we can add the glue to lock those in place. We want glue good and strong in this area, so I'm adding a little more glue than I do in most spots. Then push those down nice and strong to make that joint so it stays. While this is drying, I'm going to wait to do these three and I'm going to build this one over here. Same technique, we're going to draw the line so that it's straight so we can tell where everything meets. That makes it easier for us to make the perfect sticks for these locations. I'm going to number this one. I'm going to put a one on it. And with it laying in place, I can mark both places at once. Notice I hold it down with one hand, I mark both ends with the other, so that way I'm sure it's the right size. Slice my little fins. All right, so that one fits nice and neat. And now I'm going to measure the next two. I'll push this aside with its little number one on it. I'm making sure I leave enough of this to use over here. So I'm marking these nice and close to the ends. I'm gonna just set that there for later. Notice that fits just perfect. As far as having extra length. Those two sticks are now awesome. And let's do one more stick out here.
always mark your sticks. If you don't have a pencil, borrow one. Then I'm going to put a three on this one so I don't lose track. Let's glue those in as well. Once again, just enough glue to hold them in place, not glue oozing out because later when we cut these wings out, that oozing glue is a problem. With your sticks glued down, it is time to cut out those little flaps again and make sure we attach the flaps over the wings. If you get glue on your fingers, you can go use the sink to dry it off. I accidentally touched my wing and I really didn't want to. So if I had to clean my fingers, it'd have been good. And then always make sure you put your cap back on your glue. Let's mark these sticks really quick. This time I'm gonna use the actual piece of wood as how I connect the line. So I'm gonna just lay this across and I'm just gonna connect from there to there and from there to there. And that's gonna fit in there just perfect. Slice, slice, and that one's good. That'll fit just awesome. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Lay it in place, make sure it's lined up. Connect my little lines along the wood stick. And slice, slice to wrap it up. Let's glue those in place as well. Make sure you get wood to wood glue here as well. These we want to really stick in here. These don't bend like the next one that we're gonna do. There we go. Last stick here in the middle. This one is important, it needs to snugly fit inside there so that we've got strong wings when we're done. This one I'm going to make a little point where those connect. So it's going to almost be like an arrow point. And then it's got to come up here and have that same arrow point as well. So it's two cuts to make that little sharp point and two cuts to make the other little sharp point. You want that one to fit in there nice and snug to have a good fit. No need to number it because it is the last stick we do. That fit really good. So now we can glue it in and let everything dry before the next step. Now we need to cut our wings out. If you do this before it's totally dry, it's actually good because then that glue can't be annoying and make it more difficult. Be careful not to slice your sticks as they can be uh, easily sliced. We've already done that because we've cut them. And you just wanna come really close to your fin as you cut out your little design. If you have a piece of your stick that's not glued well, you can add a little more glue at the, at the moment. I'm gonna just push that down and let those dry like that. And I'm gonna finish cutting out this as well. Once again, being super careful to not cut the sticks. I'm pushing on the paper, not the stick, as I slice around it. And then this, because we did that A to B slice back in the beginning, we only need to cut these three pieces. 
See that already moves off there, and then we can finish with the back slice. And because we put glue in this joint, notice that's sturdy. If you don't have a sturdy joint there, you can add some more glue so that it stays. It's not a horrible idea to squeeze in a little extra glue there just because that is one spot that I see break quite often. Not a lot, just a little. So our delta dart has to have a good center of gravity to be able to fly well. And attaching our wing, we have found that if you go back one and one quarter inches, that's the correct spot to move your wing back. I've also found that if I take my pinky and I just mark this spot where my finger was, or I'm gonna put this finger because it's almost the same size as my pinky. So if I mark this spot right here, it's a good location for where to put my fin. So that's how far my wing is gonna go back. I'm gonna set my wing up here right now so I can mark where the front of the glue goes. Notice the wing still bends, which is good. And right there is my inch and a quarter. I'm gonna find the jig. This nifty little toy is what makes it easy for us to glue these together. Notice it sits right inside there, and this is going to have the exact dihedral angle we need to attach our wing. I'm putting glue on the stick all the way back. This is the heaviest that I put the glue. I'm making sure that the part that I'm gluing is not glued to the wood. So there's my inch and a quarter mark, and all I did was I pushed this back so that I've got all the glue in the little grooves. I'm gonna quickly grab my wing, and at this point, I'm finally gonna put glue in these areas so that when I'm done, it stays strong. Open it up a little bit to get that glue inside. And then we are gonna glue our wing right to that spot. Make sure it's resting on the little wood sides. That's what gives us our dihedral angle. Give it a nice press so that it stays, and then Look for our little pin boxes. These are magnetic, they hold the pins and they stick right up there. And take two of these little pins and then gently pin your main wing to the fuselage. These do come out later, so you're just holding it in place while it dries. There is nothing more you can do with your Delta Dart at this time. You need to just let it dry till the next day. Find the cabinet labeled for your hour, and then carefully set your design up there to dry. Congratulations on getting that far in your Delta Dart, and look forward to the next day when you get to add your tail fin. At any point, take the rubber band, which you haven't used yet, and your propeller, any sticks that are still of useful length, and make sure you store them in that file cabinet I showed you earlier so nobody messes with your stuff. Return your knife to the area where we store the X-Acto knives and make sure your glue is capped and let me know how your project is going. All right, it is a day later and I'm gonna carefully lift it out. Notice my wings are now sturdy and I'm ready to add the tail fin. This jig can be moved out of the way and you need to find these two little jigs. This one is gonna hold the tail fin in place and the other one is gonna hold the nose at the right angle as it dries. Turn your tail fin around and put glue all along this center strip. Once again, making sure that the cap was on the glue. If not, let me know and we'll find the person that uh, didn't put it away correctly. Once you've got your glue on, simply line up your airplane And then slide this slider so it is at the exact angle that it actually stays in place. And then to make sure that it's straight, you can add this little jig in the back as well. And that way your plane will dry and you'll be ready for the next part of the cool project tomorrow. Once again, when you're finished, store it, making sure that it stays the way it's supposed to be. And that way nobody messes with it till the next day. Double check your caps, clean up your area, Put the envelope back in the cabinet and you're good to go. 
Alrighty friends, it is an exciting day as my wing has dried and now you can find the pliers and carefully grab those pins and rotate and remove them. We want to keep the pins as straight as possible so we can reuse them. So it's just a gentle pull as they come out. Then you can take your propeller and make sure that you do not bend this propeller wire. We need to make sure we're super careful and we push it on with the little clip hanging underneath our design. It takes a couple wiggles, but then you can just slide it into place, emphasizing we do not want to bend that. I'm going to set the plane down. I'm going to grab the rubber band and then you need to simply tie a knot around your finger and then push it through the hole so the rubber band is connected. With your rubber band ready, it's time to attach it to our airplane. First step is to slide it in the little hook, making sure that your knot is towards the other end. The next step is to take one of your pins and carefully stick it in the wood so that it holds that rubber band in place, making sure that you do not stab yourself as that ouch sound is highly overrated. Attach your rubber band around the pin and then you can move to the booklet to learn how you're going to fly it for the first flight. In the booklet, find step number 21 and notice they show you how to hold it and they show you which way to wind it. Clockwise is the number we need and then you need to come tell me that you found that the first flight is going to be 50 turns as you move towards a 100 turn flight. Keep in mind that your first flight probably will not be successful and that is where you return to steps 23 through 32 and turn your plane into the awesome Delta Dart Flyer that it can become. Alrighty friends, I hope you had a blast building your little Delta Darts. I hope you took the time to master them and change the aerodynamics since they flew just the way they're supposed to. If you're looking for a place to buy one of these, I'll put a link down in the description. And my friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you've got a question, comment, or a suggestion, add it down below. If you've got a flight recorded, please share it with us at HL Mod Tech on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. And last but not least, if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.